Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back into the next episode of our Manifestation Matrix program. I hope you all are doing great. I hope you are having an amazing time. And today's episode, I must say, is one of the most important episode in the Manifestation Matrix program. Because what I'm about to share with you today, this ties up the whole information together. Or you can say that this is the key lesson that will change your understanding, that will change your mindset and your perception about manifestation completely. And this idea is about understanding our marvelous mind. And more importantly, or more precisely, it's about understanding the power of your subconscious mind. Because if there is any driving force that governs the manifestation in your life, it is your subconscious mind, mind, my dear friends. Because your subconscious mind on an unconscious level is attracting everything that you have in your life today. It doesn't matter wherever you are in your life today. It doesn't matter what you have been doing. It doesn't matter what you're going to do from this point onwards. If you do not understand and integrate the power of the subconscious mind into your daily practices, what is going to happen is that you are going to always be falling behind on certain ideas and certain elements. So it is very, very important that we understand how does our subconscious mind works. And it is very important to understand to learn how we can influence our subconscious mind to create the results that are that are going to be the results that we want in our life. So it's all about understanding how to influence your subconscious mind. And that is what I'm going to share with you in today's video. I'll be discussing with you about the power of the subconscious mind. I'll be sharing with you the key element that you have to learn in order to master the power of your subconscious mind so that you can attract anything and everything that you want to attract. So in order to do so, let me just bring up the whiteboard here. All right. I hope you all can see the whiteboard. Yes, you can. All right, perfect. All right, here we go. So what we are talking about here is, as I already shared with you, we are talking about the power of our mind, okay? And to be more precisely, we are gonna discuss about our subconscious mind, all right? Now, when we think about mind, for some people, it could be like, okay, let me put it in this way. When you think about mind, is there any image that flashes on the screen? For some of you, the screen should be, or could be, or might be the brain, but that's not your mind, okay? If I ask you to think about your house, you have an image. If I ask you to think about a fruit, you have an image. So you see, for everything, we have an image, but not for the mind. Now, imagine if you don't have an image for the mind, how you can expect to change something when you don't have an image to work with. For, for example, in order for me to change the outlook of my house, I should have an image that what does that new rearrangement looks like to me. If I don't have the image of that new arrangement, what will happen? Whatever my plans are, they are going to be stuck in between. So it is very, very important and it is very, very vital that I have an image of the mind. And this is the problem that a great doctor, Dr. Thurman Fleet in 1934 has observed in the Simontonian Texas, right? So he was thinking about it and he draw an image of the mind. And then he was explaining people how to think in a certain way using this mind's image so that they can heal themselves. And later on that image has been used by many different people, many different authors, even from my mentor, Bob Proctor, he has used to love that image, share that image. So what I'm gonna represent to you today is my understanding and my awareness about that image that I have learned over the last eight years, applied over the last eight years, shared with different people over the last eight years, and now it's my time to share it with you. And I can tell you, and I can bet you, this can really make a big and a huge difference in your life if you let it to be, all right? So for a minute, I want you to let this big circle represents your mind, okay? And then let this small circle represents your body, all right? So here we have your mind and body. Now, your mind and body is divided into two parts. Not mind and body, but your mind is divided into two parts. 
And here we have this dumbbell shaped element that is called as your brain. Now, this is your conscious mind. This is your subconscious mind. This is your brain and this is your body. All right. So this is the diagram of the mind, right? It may seem like a comical diagram, but let me tell you one thing, my dear friend. It may be comical, but this is one of the most powerful idea that you can and you could ever learn in your life. So let's understand from the very basics, okay? Now, first of all, you have to understand that there is this universal energy around you, okay? And this universal energy is available to you all the time. And this energy, the universal energy that is around you, this energy is just is. That means this energy is neither positive nor negative. This energy is just is. And in our conscious mind right here, we have this free will. And this free will gives us the ability to build ideas. That means we can accept and we can reject ideas. Or if I put it in a better way, using this free will, we build ideas in our conscious minds. And these ideas can be any ideas. So we're not talking about whether they're positive or negative as of now. We are thinking about just ideas. They are just ideas. And then when these ideas are impressed to your subconscious mind, and when you become emotionally involved with these ideas, you know what happened? Then these ideas trigger your brain cells. And then those brain cells trigger the vibration of your body and that change in vibration is expressed to and through your body, or I must say these ideas are expressed to and through your body in the form of an action. And that is how you got results. Now, these results can be good or bad. They can be positive results or there can be negative results. And to understand from where these results are happening, this is how results are happening, my dear friends. It is our conscious mind that has the power to build ideas and it is in our hands what kind of ideas we want to build and then we can impress those ideas to our subconscious mind which alter the brain pattern the brain chemistry and then that altered brain chemistry ultimately move our body into vibration executing the ideas that have been planted in the subconscious mind and then ultimately giving us the results that we are having now, for example let me give you an example okay once again, let us say this is your mind, conscious and the subconscious. This is your body, okay, right here. And we have here is the brain. Now think about this for a minute. Let's say someone have an idea in their conscious mind about that their life is not good. Now this is the idea they have consciously selected. And this is the idea they are repeating again and again again and again, again and again, there's a repetition happening. Now what will happen? With repetition, this idea is going to get impressed onto their subconscious mind. And then how they're going to feel about their life. If they're thinking about their life is not good, obviously they will feel bad about their life. Now what will happen? This energy will trigger the brain cells into their brain. And those brain cells are triggered by negative energy. So there will be negative vibrational cells which will move your body into a negative vibration, which will result in a negative action or maybe no action at all. And what kind of results you will get here? Negative results. Now, what if you want better results in your life? What if you really want something better? This is where you have to use your mind in the right way. And as I told you in the very initial step that this is where the free will is, my dear friend. So what does that free will means? The free will means it is your choice what kind of ideas you want to build in your conscious mind. Now, let's say you decided in your conscious mind that you're going to only think about productive ideas. Let's say while here you was afraid of living your life the way you want to live. Now, right here, you're thinking about prosperity. You're thinking about abundance of money. You're thinking about that everything that I want, I can achieve it. You're thinking about all these positive ideas in your conscious mind. And you're filling your consciousness every time with these ideas, positive ideas, positive ideas, positive ideas, what's going to happen? Now, these ideas will get emotionally involved to your subconscious mind. Now, when your subconscious mind is filled with these kind of ideas, so what kind of emotions it will generate? It will generate the emotions of fate. 
And then this faith is going to trigger the brain cells into your body, or we can say that it is going to create new brain cells that associates faith. And then those brain cells are going to move your body into a different state of vibration. And you're going to take a positive action, which is going to result in the form of positive results. That is the science of manifestation. This is how the thoughts become things, you know, the idea that comes to us. But in order to really properly apply this information, we have to really understand the functionalities of our conscious and subconscious mind. And that's what I'll explain you right now, right here, okay? So let, pay, let us pay again the perfect attention here about on the screen now, all right? Once again, let's draw that image. We have that image right here. Okay, let me redraw this one. So this is our mind right here, okay? And this is our body right here. That's our brain, conscious and subconscious mind. All right, now let us start by understanding the ideas about our conscious mind, all right? So first of all, we have to understand that our conscious mind is our thinking mind. Now, when I say our conscious mind is thinking mind, we have to understand that this is where we build our thoughts and the kind of the thought that we build our are in our hand. That means it is our choice what kind of ideas we want to accept and what kind of ideas we want to reject. Nobody can force you to accept the ideas that you don't want to accept and nobody can even force you to reject the ideas that you don't want to reject, all right? So it's up to you. And this is where you have to consciously and deliberately program yourself every single day, making the conscious choices, not just making random choices, making conscious choices about what do you want in your life, making conscious choices about the decisions that you want to make, making conscious choices about the things that you want to do. And then understand at the same time, this is where you have the ability to originate ideas. You know, think about all the inventors of the past, like the people like Edison. Do you think Edison has a Wikipedia or Google to search information? No, he doesn't have it. So from where the idea of creating an incandescible bulb comes to in his, in his mind? That idea come into his mind because the power to originate ideas was always there. Now imagine at the time of Edison, when there was not enough resources, he was still able to tap into his power and originate ideas. What amazing things we can do today with this power when we have all the information just available at one click. You can just open your smartphone right now and there will be information that will pop up right now on the, on the screen. You know why? Because there is information. So imagine how powerful this idea of originating idea can be when we have a lot of information at our disposal. And then the, another most important part of your conscious mind is that this is where your intellectual faculties are, all right? Intellectual faculties, these are your tools, just like the way I'm having these digital tools. I have the mic, I have this, you know, the, uh, you can say that these, the drawing board, I have the mouse and everything. These are the digital devices that I have in order to provide the service that I'm providing. Similarly, we have tools in our mind that helps us to achieve the things that we want to achieve. They are called as imagination, perception, intuition, reason, will, and memory. We have a great program on that that is called as Mind Magic Toolbox. If any one of you might be interested to know more about that program or study that program, you can always reach out to us. We'll give you information about that. Okay. And then last but not the least, your conscious mind is your educated mind. But this is where the problem is. You need to understand that your conscious mind deals with gathering information. Okay, while it is your subconscious mind that governs the actions that you're going to take. So if there is something that you know, but you have not learned how to integrate that information to the subconscious mind, that information is going to stay in your conscious mind. Like for example, there are many people who know that exercise is good for their health, but how many people actually do exercise? Very few. Right, There are people who convince themselves that exercise is good and they go and do exercise. They actually end up getting better health. And there are people who were not able to convince themselves. So this is where you have to understand that any information, any idea, until or unless we don't convince ourselves, until or unless we don't plant that idea to the subconscious mind, nothing's going to happen. This hardware that we have, this physical body, it is not going to move into action until or unless we have not updated, upgraded the software. 
it is very, very important and very, very vital for us to understand that it's all about changing the software that we have. Once we learn how to change the software, we can actually work on the plane where the hardware will take action. All right, now let's talk about the subconscious mind. While your conscious mind has a choice, your subconscious mind has no choice. The only choice it has to accept ideas. However, there is a condition. It accepts only those ideas which are mixed well with emotions. If your ideas just plain ideas, they're not going to be accepted by your subconscious mind. But if your ideas mixed well with the emotions, like this, your idea is going to be accepted by your subconscious mind. Like this, your ideas are going to be executed by your subconscious mind. So it is very, very important and very, very vital for us to understand that subconscious mind only understand those ideas that are well and truly mixed with the emotion. So you have to learn how to mix emotions into your ideas. The more emotions you involve into your ideas, the better it is going to become for you. And then your subconscious mind, it does not understand the difference between what is real and what is imagined. And this is the power. And this is the power we have to use. But in order to use this power, we have to learn how to relax our mind. You know, because if your mind is not relaxed, what's going to happen? Let's say this is your mind again here. And you are trying to think about this prosperity idea. But if your mind is haywire, there are a lot of chaos going on. What's going to happen? This idea is not going to find a place into your conscious mind. And forget about that idea going to your subconscious mind if it doesn't find its place into the conscious mind. So the first and the far most important thing that we have to learn is how to create space for that idea to get into our conscious mind. How to relax ourselves. How to really get to the level of mindset where we are relaxed and we are allowing these ideas to become part of ourselves. You see all this process that I explained to you about the conscious and the subconscious mind, how ideas goes from your conscious to the subconscious mind, and how if we are emotionally involved with the wrong ideas, that makes a lot of huge difference in our life. And this is very, very vital for you to understand that this is what I explained to you right now, right here about your conscious and your subconscious mind. And this study never ends here at this point that I have shared with you, okay? I will highly encourage you that all of you go ahead and get the book Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. Read this book cover to cover, cover to cover. Read these ideas over and over again until these ideas become habit net part of your personality. You know, I'll read something from, you, from this book for you. Now, here it is. It's on the very first, you know, on the top of the second chapter right here. It states that whatever your conscious mind assumes and believes to be true, that means whatever your conscious mind right here, all right, your conscious mind, whatever your conscious mind assumes and believe, okay, to be true, he said that your subconscious mind will accept. That means any idea that you believe in is going to be accepted by your subconscious mind. And it will bring to pass. Brings to pass me that idea is going to be executed in the form of action. And then there is going to be reaction, which ultimately form the results that you want in your life. All right? So it is very, very important. So if you believe in fortune, if you believe in divine guidance, if you believe in right action, guess what? All the blessings of the lives are going to be towards you. So you think with your conscious mind, and whatever you habitually think, that is the key point, my dear friends. For many years, many years, people keep questioning me. Why my affirmations are not working? Why my goal cards are not producing the results? This is why. You need to understand that. You think with your conscious mind and whatever you think habitually. So are you really habitually connected with your goal that you don't have a need to have to remind yourself about your goal? You don't have to remind yourself to stay patient. You don't have to remind yourself to stay relaxed when the situations are hazy, you're automatically into that habit. If you are, then these ideas are going to sink into your subconscious mind, which then creates according to the nature of your thought. Your subconscious mind is the seed of your emotions. It is your creative mind. If you think good, good will follow. If you think evil, evil will follow. This is the way your mind works. So we really, really have to understand that idea. And this is this is not just philosophical information. This has been proven by many other professors, many other scientists written in many different books in many different ways. But what I'm telling you is the plain and the simple truth right here, right now. 
that your subconscious mind, it will give you anything and everything that you want to achieve if you learn and apply these ideas. So all you have to do is learn how to relax your mind. Now, how we can relax our mind? That's a, that's a question that many people ask me all the time. That's a beard. You're talking about relaxation, right? But how I can do this? You need to understand that relaxation is not about, you know, being positive all the time or being always in the right place at the right time. Relaxation is all about, as I told you in the very first day, how quickly you switch yourself back onto the positive vibration. And this comes with practice, all right? So what I'm going to do is that tomorrow's episode that we will have will be a relaxation visualization for you, okay? So it is going to be a recorded relaxation visualization where I will share ideas with you. All you have to do is just listen to that every single day. Don't put yourself under pressure. I have to listen to it for 30 days, 60 days. Okay, understand it is one day at a time. You don't build this kinds of momentum, you know, or you don't change this like this quickly in one day. You have to really go through a practice again and again, again and again. That's how you really end up changing your mind. So the foundational idea to really apply the manifestation into practice is learn how to relax yourself. You know, I remember that a relaxed mind will see opportunity in everything that is presented in front of them. But a scattered mind or a scattered mind will find problems and obstacles even in the best opportunities that are presented in front of them. So it's you who need to understand that you have to learn how to relax your mind. You have to learn how to reprogram your mind to stay in that relaxed vibration, into that relaxed idea of mind. All right? Okay? So with that note, I encourage you that tonight, I will share that chapter with everybody who's in the Google Classroom. There is a chapter on relaxation from James Allen. It's about serenity. Take out that chapter and write it down every single day. You know, some of my clients has wrote that 365 days on the street. And the results has been absolutely incredible and fabulous because they have really get emotionally involved with that idea. They have really planted that idea into their subconscious mind. Understand that it's not a one-time thing. It comes with repetition every single day, over and over and over and over again. When you are practicing that idea repetitively, that's how you get the results that you want in your life, my dear friends. Okay, so get the power of the subconscious mind, start reading it, start understanding it, and replay this video again and again, again and again, to understand how ideas goes from your conscious to your subconscious mind, and then manifest the results into your life. So thank you so much for being here in this another episode. I hope these episodes and this program is really adding value to your life. I'll see you in the next episode. Till then, take care. Live the life the way you want to live. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you so much.